The story started in 1905 in Cork, Ireland, where a British soldier named Percy Fawcett was having a deer hunting competition with many other soldiers. He succeeded in winning the hunt. That night, Percy and his wife came to a party, the peak event of the hunting competition. Between soldiers of the same rank, he was the only one who did not have a single medal. People regretted a great soldier like him came from a bad reputation family. In March 1906, Percy was preparing to leave for London for the Royal Geographical Society. Arriving in London, Percy went straight to Sir George Goldie, a director of the Royal Geographical Society. He had heard a lot about him who was often assigned to many places. He then explained that they only had a few parts of Bolivia mapped. There was a primitive area with rubber plantations all over Amazonia, which were very profitable and Bolivia and Brazil were having a dispute over their borders because of that. The two countries then asked the UK to act as a mediator to prevent a war from happening. In that regard, he offered Percy to map the uncharted region, but Percy demanded a better task to gain reputation. Sir George Goldie then explained that the task was not just a survey, but an exploration of an uncharted forest where the environment was very cruel. There were terrible diseases and dangerous wild tribes. He would be honored if he managed to succeed in the mission. It was known that Percy's father was a gambler and drunkard. After returning home, Percy talked about the offer that was made to his wife. His wife was just supportive, knowing that her husband was doing everything for the sake of the family. In April 1906, Percy's journey to the Amazon began. On the ship, he met Henry Coston, who was assigned to be her aide. Percy was a bit angry because they had been on the same ship for a week on the ship without him introducing himself. Coston said he just wanted to make sure that Percy was ready for their exploration. Percy then told him that his reputation as a man depended on the success of that task. In the middle of their train journey, they got a warrant to map the Verde River, which was an important part of the border between Bolivia and Brazil. Verde River was just the name for the river surrounded by the green Amazon forest. Their survey would start from a place called Fazenda Jacobina, an old town near the rubber plantation. Long story short, finally in July 1906, they arrived in eastern Bolivia, an area that had never been mapped. Not long after that, they arrived at the Fazenda Jacobina Opera House where they met a young corporal named Manley. Manley informed them of a message from the commission at the border asking Percy to cancel the exploration mission, saying it was too dangerous because of the raging war. Percy asked Manley to send a reply message that he would not withdraw from the mission. He also asked Manley to look for local people as their guide. Manley told him that he had to buy an Indian slave from Baron, the owner of the plantation. When telling Baron that he wanted a slave to guide him through the Amazon forest, Baron's men said that no one had returned from there. The next day, their group left with three large rafts and four horses. On the way, they saw a small German boat. There was someone on the boat. They tried to ask the person, but suddenly, they were attacked by a group of inland tribesmen. One of them was hit by an arrow and fell into the river. Percy and the others immediately jumped into the water to avoid the attack, but it turned out that Verde River was full of piranha fish. Percy and Costin managed to climb back into the raft, but one of them perished after the piranha had devoured him because his body was entangled in the net. After that, they continued their journey along the river. Not long after that, they pulled over on land that could be used for camping. At that time, Manley was infected with an illness that made him cough up blood while Coston had a wound on his hand. Percy asked the guide whether they were close to the destination. The guide answered that it would still take weeks to get there. The guide said that the place was always dangerous, but Percy would soon find out that many people had lived there and the place was filled with gold and rubber. The lost city was even older than England and it was deep in the forest. Only the white people had never found it. Upon hearing the story, Percy thought the man was making up the story. That night, Percy asked Coston to read a letter from his wife. He was afraid he wouldn't be able to bear the news if he read it himself. Coston then told him that his wife and children had moved to Devon. His wife had given birth to another son named Brian. After that, Percy burned the letter. He felt stupid leaving his family to come to such a dangerous and unknown place. The next day, they continued their exploration. Their food ran out. One of them started to lose his mind after trying to survive in that condition for quite a long time. He wasn't even sure if they could make it back safely. Long story short, they finally made it to the upstream. They were very happy to be able to reach a place that had never been touched by anyone, but at that time, the Indian who was their guide chose to run away. They were not surprised because the man's job was only to take them there. They then tried to enter the forest. Percy shot a wild boar which ended up as their food stock for their journey home. Along the way, Percy also found a lot of pottery shards and thought that what the guide said was true all along. They only knew that the place had never been visited by people, but it turned out that only the white people were not yet reached there. Percy was convinced that there was definitely a settlement deep in the forest. The task of tracing the Verde River was completed. They immediately started their journey home. Percy was greeted with joy by the British people. 
He was considered the bravest British explorer. He then asked to meet James Murray, a biologist and an explorer who claimed to have read Percy's article about the slave trade in America. Percy answered that the native tribes there were worth their concern. Murray then said that he wanted the expedition to be carried out again and that the aim of making a map was of secondary importance. He was sure that the discovery he found might have a very big meaning. Percy was then told to keep his discovery a secret because it could be a defense that supported the existence of the primitive tribes. Then, on February 6, 1911, Percy reported about his expedition in front of many important people. He said that the Amazon was more than just a massive rainforest but contained a civilization that might have been an ancestor of the people around the area. His opinion made everyone surprised. They didn't believe it and thought that Percy was tempted by the myth of the Golden Kingdom in the Amazon forest, which destroyed many explorers from other countries, but Percy claimed that if they could find that lost city, whose existence was considered a myth, it would start a new chapter in human history. Percy then showed the pottery remnant he found in the forest. Not only that, he also explained about an important note that his wife found at Trinity College. The note was written by a Portuguese soldier in 1753 and mentioned explicitly the discovery of a lost city which Percy called the Lost City of Z. People still laughed at Percy's statement. Murray then challenged him to go exploring with him again to prove this. Percy happily accepted the challenge, even Costum was willing to join in again. Percy's decision made his wife angry. His wife said she was ready to accompany him on his journey. She had learned navigation and knew the history of the region. Percy then said that this place was not a place for women. He explained how dangerous it was to travel there. Apart from that, they also had children. Before the argument got worse, Jack came to stop them. Long story short, Percy, Costin, Manley, Murray, and several other people finally started the exploration in May 1912. On their journey, Murray looked very tired and said his backpack was too heavy, so he would throw away some objects that were not needed. A moment later, they were attacked by a group of inland tribes. This was Percy's first experience. He forbade everyone from shooting. He sang the soldiers of the Queen, accompanied by the playing of musical instruments by Manley to stop the attack. He then tried to get closer to the tribesmen. After they were considered harmless by the tribesmen, he called his friends to join them in going to the settlement. The chief of the tribe had accepted them as guests. Once Murray realized that what they were approaching was a cannibal tribe, he refused to join. In the end, Murray separated himself while the others went to meet the chief. Percy asked the chief about the ancient city that had been inhabited by many people, which was located deep in the forest. The chief answered that he had heard rumors about a city but was not sure while saying that they still had to continue upstream to find people who might be able to help. After that, the inland tribesmen showed how they hunted the fish in the river and how they settled their plantations without destroying nature. He was ashamed of the modern people who thought the inland tribes were not capable of anything. But the truth was that they were more advanced than they expected. They continued their journey and found Murray lying in the forest. Murray had consumed all their food stock. Percy was angry at him and said that his children would be more reliable than Murray. When they were on the raft, the river current was very strong. Percy asked Murray to stay in position so that the raft remained balanced, but instead he moved and caused one of their food basket to fall. When the raft hit a rock, Manley fell into the river. Percy told him to swim to the edge. Not long after that, Murray also fell into the water and Percy ordered him to swim to the edge too, but Murray instead hung on the side of the raft which caused the raft to lose its balance. Another basket of food fell and Percy finally let go of Murray's grip from the raft. Manley then helped Murray to swim to the riverbank and they pulled over to gather. Thanks to that incident, two food baskets were lost. Percy was very angry with Murray who couldn't cooperate at all. Murray's injuries were getting worse. He kept babbling, saying that everything that happened to him was Percy's fault. Their trip this time was slowed down thanks to Murray. After discussing Murray's condition, they agreed to send him home. Percy asked Murray to go to the miners' camp which was south of the river. He would provide food, give him their last horse, and provide a local man to guide him home. Percy explained that he could not let Murray endanger the group's safety because of his condition, but instead of thanking him, Murray said that Percy didn't care about him. After Murray left, they were very surprised to see their food supplies were sabotaged by Murray, so like it or not, they had to immediately return home. Percy asked them not to give up without getting anything, but after being told that their food wouldn't last for another week, he decided to stop the exploration. After returning home, Percy had already had his third child, a daughter named Joan. Percy was very grateful to have a wife who managed to raise their children well. A few days later, Percy and his exploration group came to attend the Royal Geographical Society meeting. Murray was also present at the meeting. He told the director of the association that Percy had left him. Percy denied that, saying he had given him supply. In that situation, strategies needed to be implemented to save everyone's life. 
that Murray said that on the trip, they spent all their time hanging out with wild tribes and never saw evidence of the lost city. Percy then said that Murray was the one who made them fail to achieve their goal. Costin also said that Murray had sabotaged their supply, but with his innocent face, Murray said that he was framed. He said Costin and Manley were disgusting and could not be trusted. Costin was very annoyed when he heard that. He said that Murray should have just been left dead in the forest. The director of the association stopped their argument. Murray then said that he would consider all problems resolved if Percy was willing to admit his mistake in front of all the members of the association and witnessed by his own wife. But Percy denied he had made a mistake. He gave Murray the only remaining horse, giving him far more than the portion of food he was supposed to have. He told the association that when his men begged him to leave Murray, he couldn't do it. But even though it had been explained, Murray still demanded an apology from Percy. Instead, Percy apologized to Costin and Manley because he thought Murray was worthy of joining their exploration. After that, Percy resigned from the association. After returning home, his wife told him that the former non-commissioned officer had to send his name to the war office, which meant that Percy would immediately go to the battlefield. Jack was angry with his father, who always left his family. His father had just returned from exploration but had to leave again for the war. Percy tried to explain that it was his duty to serve the country. Jack then questioned what his father's obligations were to his wife and children. Jack said that his father never thought about his family and had also failed in his exploration mission. Percy was so emotional that he unconsciously slapped Jack. Percy's wife then helped Jack while explaining that what his father had done was for his own good. Two years later, Percy and his troops were placed on the front lines. At that time, Percy's subordinates told him that Murray was following an Arctic expedition with the Canadians but then deserted the exploration. This news proved how cowardly Murray was. In the barrack at that time, a psychic arrived from Russia. Everyone was curious to hear the prediction of the future of the respected Major Percy. The psychic said that what Percy had been searching for was far greater than what he could imagine. His soul would never be at peace before finding that place. It was his destiny to find it. September 26, 1916, Percy and his troops prepared to charge forward. He told the troops to fight for their loved ones and the people who fought together on the battlefield, but unfortunately, he was shot during the attack. Luckily, he still survived. There was a wound that affected his eye nerve, but the doctor said that he would still survive. He was advised not to go back for another exploration. Percy was very sad to hear that because finding that lost city was the biggest dream of his life. In 1923, Percy retired from his obligation to serve the country. A journalist came to him and said that their readers were curious about Percy's whereabouts since the war ended. Percy answered to the journalist that they could tell the readers that he had recovered and adapted to life at home. The journalist then informed that his exploration in South America had sparked extraordinary interest in exploration in the United States. Dr. Hamilton Rice would soon leave for Brazil with his radio and plane. A large group had already been recruited for the exploration. Hearing that, Percy could only hope that they wouldn't ruin what they would find there. He then asked how the journalist found him. The journalist answered that his son had written a letter for them. One day, Jack was seen practicing shooting by hunting a rabbit. Percy approached him and then gave him a necklace he got from the Grinning tribe. Jack then asked if his father still believe in the lost city. Percy only nodded. Turned out, Jack wanted to explore alone with his father to look for the lost city. Percy refused because he felt he was too old. Jack then said that the Americans would explore with their weapons. They could not just pray and hope that the lost city would not be destroyed. Jack told him that they had to save the place by finding it first before the Americans. Percy finally agreed, but Jack had to try to get approval from his mother first. Jack then told his mother that he knew it was dangerous but quoted his mother's words to live life out of his comfort zone. His mother couldn't refuse after hearing his quoted her words. She never thought what she said would be a boomerang for her. Percy then invited Costin to come along but Costin refused, saying he couldn't leave his wife and child. He also couldn't cover the costs. Percy thought that Costin had lost faith in the existence of the lost city of Z, but Costin said he only doubted that the discovery was able to provide all the answers they needed. On December 3, 1924, in front of the media, Percy announced an exploration of the lost city of Z, which will be carried out with Jack, his eldest son. Lucky for him, the Royal Geographical Society was willing to support funds for them. The director of the association apologized for not trusting him when he had a dispute with Murray. Percy then showed the compass he had always carried for the last 20 years and said that it would be the memento of his exploration. Finally, the time had come for them to start their journey. Long story short, they arrived in the Amazon forest in April 1925. Percy showed Jack the place where there used to be a plantation. Then they walked until they found a local tribe settlement. The tribe told Percy about a cave that no one outside their tribe knew about. 
Percy was also told about a large rock covered in paintings of many men and horses. The location of that rock might be the gate to the lost city of Z. Percy and Jack were very well welcomed by the chief there. It made Percy realize that after all, they all came from the same ancestor. After a break for a moment in the local tribe's settlement, the two of them continued their journey. In the middle of the forest, they met another group of Indian tribes. They ran quite far until they finally met another group of Indian tribes who rescued them. They were taken to their settlement. The local tribe performed a ritual for both. At that time, Jack thought he would die in that place. Percy then said that many mysteries in the world were unknown, but they both had made a journey that gave them meaning. After that, the two of them just obeyed whatever the local tribe did to them. A few years later, Percy and Jack never returned. Percy's wife went to the director of the association to tell him that there was a Brazilian man who said he saw Percy and Jack living with the local tribe. The director of the association asked her to accept the reality of whatever happened to Percy and Jack. Over a hundred people were sent to look for them, but to no avail. She then gave him something that the person entrusted. That something was a compass that Percy had shown before leaving to explore. This meant that perhaps it was true that Percy and Jack had found the lost city and decided not to return. At the end of the film, it was informed that Percy's belief in the lost city had been the subject of ridicule for almost a century. But at the beginning of the 20th century, archaeologists discovered an amazing network of ancient roads, bridges, and agricultural settlements along the Amazon forest. Among all of them was the location proposed by Percy as the lost city of Z.